Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky will virtually address the Israeli parliament in just three hours from now. Preparations have begun to uh, hold the virtual address in the Knesset. Now, a special situation room has been set up in parliament as parts of the building are currently under renovations. Zelensky's address comes at a time when the Knesset is in recess, because of which many lawmakers are traveling overseas. And as per Israeli media reports, special arrangements have been made for the lawmakers to attend the address via video link. Until now, Israel has played a neutral role in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. It has restrained from imposing any sanctions on Russia, but has reluctantly condemned Moscow's aggression. Earlier this month, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett visited Russia with his delegation, during which he offered to play peacemaker between the two countries at war. Zelensky had previously asked for a more formal virtual address in the Knesset, a request which was denied by Israel, citing the reason that such a session cannot be held when the parliament is in recess. Israeli reports say that the Russian envoy to the country also requested to brief the parliament ahead of Zelensky's address. This was to present the Russian perspective. The briefing, however, did not come through. Experts say that Israel has been cautious of being seen as supporting one side in the conflict. It has close ties with both Moscow and Kiev. A large number of Jews live in Russia and Ukraine, which makes choosing a side all tricky for Israel. The Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky himself is Jewish. More than that, Russia has its troops in Syria. Moscow controls the sky in Syria. Because of this, Israel is reliant on coordination with Russia to carry out military strikes in Syria against Ukrainian proxies there. So siding with one party has regional implications for Israel as well. Now, for more on this, our correspondent Jody Cohen joins us live from Tel Aviv. Hello to you, Jody. Thank you for being with us. What can you tell us about the preparations for President Zelensky's speech and also about the expected attendance? Hi, Alison. Yes, so I'm actually standing at Habima Square in Tel Aviv, where President Zelensky's speech is expected to be live streamed just on that building behind me. They're making the preparations here now as we speak. We might get interrupted by some sound checks. The flags I've just seen, the yellow and blue flags have been arriving. Now, as you said, President Zelensky is going to be addressing Israeli parliamentarians. And because the Knesset, the Israeli parliament, is actually in recess at the moment and renovations are taking place in the building, special arrangements have had to be made. Some MKs, members of the Knesset, are going to be meeting in a hall there, which will see the live stream address. And that event will be hosted by Knesset Speaker Mickey Levy and Prime Minister Bennett and Foreign Minister Lapid have confirmed that they will be in attendance. Um, other MKs unfortunately won't be able to attend. It is the funeral today of the most prominent rabbi in the whole of Israel. And it's expected that this is going to be the biggest funeral in Israel's history, with up to a million people possibly attending this funeral. That's just to put that into perspective, that is one in nine of all Israelis attending that funeral. Now, that has made some last minute changes have to happen because roads have closed, schools have gone online as a result of trying to manage the traffic chaos that's going to come from that funeral. And that means that some MKs will be attending there. And it also means that they're not quite sure what it will, it will mean, what the impact will be on the attendance here in Habima Square. They have been expecting thousands of people to arrive. And because of the traffic and the roads being closed, we, we don't yet know. It's too early to tell about attendance. We've got another three hours to go until the speech, but it, will, it remains to be seen how that uh, funeral will impact on the attendance, but Israelis from across the country will be able to tune in to a live stream also on their televisions if they can't come here in person. Right, and Jody, what do you expect President Zelensky to say in his address to the Israeli lawmakers? So I think if you look at what he said to other parliaments around the world, that can give us a strong indication. He's really um, invoked the most significant historic events. So, for example, when he spoke to the U.S. Congress, he talked about 9-11. When he spoke in front of the German parliament, he talked about the fall of the Berlin Wall. 
And it's expected that he's going to be not just speaking to the Israeli parliamentarians, but really appealing to the people as well. Um, it's likely that uh, he's going to invoke the fact that he is Jewish himself. It's likely that he's going to reference World War II and compare Ukraine's battle against the Russians to the Allies' battle against the Nazis and perhaps also invoke the phrase never again, which is often talked about when um, discussions take place about the Holocaust. Um, President Zelensky asked Israel to mediate between Russia and Ukraine because of its relations with both countries. It's possible that he will thank Prime Minister Bennett for those mediation efforts. Um, also Israel for its humanitarian aid and for taking in thousands of refugees. Um, it's also likely and um, possible that he's going to ask for a stronger condemnation from Israel and perhaps more defensive support. Right, Jody, stay with us while we take a look at some further details of this upcoming address. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky is expected to invoke his Jewish roots in his virtual address to the Israeli parliament in just a few hours from now. Now, Zelensky's family was a victim of the Holocaust. He had lost family members in the genocide. And today, the Ukrainian president will likely call on Israeli lawmakers to support his country's fight against Russia while drawing a parallel to Nazi Germany. Now, Zelensky's address is part of the virtual parliament tours that he has been doing since Russia launched its attack on Ukraine. Until now, Zelensky has given virtual speeches in the US, the UK, Canada, the EU and German parliament. In all of the addresses, there was one thing in common. Zelensky cited the country's history and struggles as a part of his speech to make a point. Now, appearing in his trademark khaki t-shirt, Zelensky gave a speech in the German Bundestag, steeped in historical imagery. He reminded the German parliamentarians of the Berlin airlift in 1940s and asked Germany to help tear down the metaphorical wall that Russia is building between Western and Eastern Europe. Former actor, the former president of the United States, Ronald Reagan, once said in Berlin, tear down this wall. I want to tell you now, Chancellor Scholz, tear down this wall. Give Germany the leadership that you deserve and which will make future generations proud. Help us. Help the peace. Help each Ukrainian stop the war. Help us stop it. Glory to Ukraine. Congress. He called for a no-fly zone over Ukraine, invoked the famous quote by Martin Luther King Jr. and compared Ukraine's situation to Pearl Harbor and 9-11. Remember Pearl Harbor? Terrible morning of December 7, 1941, when your sky was black from the planes attacking you. Just remember that. Remember September 11th, a terrible day in 2001, when evil tried to turn your independent territories, your cities, into a battlefield, when regular innocent people were attacked from the air in a way no one expected, in a way you could not stop it. Our country experiences the same every day right now. These words are known to each of you today. I can say I have a need. I need your decision, your help which means exactly the same, the same feel when you hear the words, I have a dream. While speaking in the Canadian Parliament, Zelensky made a first name personal appeal to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. He asked Trudeau what will happen if the Ottawa airport is bombed, urging lawmakers to help enact a no-fly zone in Ukraine. Justin, can you imagine hearing you, your children, hear all these severe explosions, the bombing of the airport, bombing of Ottawa airport, tens of other cities of your wonderful country? Can you imagine that? Cruise missiles being falling down and you are hearing it and your children asking you what happened and you are receiving the first news which infrastructure objects have been bombed and destroyed by the Russian Federation. Ukraine's wartime leader Volodymyr Zelensky also channeled Britain's wartime Prime Minister Winston Churchill in his speech at the House of Commons. 
We will not give up and we will not lose. We will fight till the end and we will fight at sea, we will fight in the air. We will defend our land at whatever the cost. We will fight in the forests, in the fields, on the shores, in the cities and the villages, on the streets. We will fight on the hills. I want to add personally, we will fight everyone on the terricons, on the banks of the Kalmius and Dnieper, and we will not give up. He has received standing ovation, often brought in additional aid to the... And today, as Zelensky speaks in the Israeli passage, he will likely invoke a personal chapter of his life as a Jewish leader accused by the Kremlin of Nazi fight. Now, Jody, coming back to you, what can you tell us about the likely reaction of the Israeli government to Zelensky's upcoming speech? Well, I think we can assume that President Zelensky is going to be showing some sort of emotive video. He's used graphics and videos to great effect, um, you know, really, really moving images of the horrific things that have been taking place in the Ukraine. So that is likely to have an impact on MPs and also on the people watching. We already know that there's been some pressure from within the cabinet on the Israeli government to do more in support of the Ukraine. And I think perhaps we can expect to see some sort of announcements going forward of some further support. For example, it's been reported that Israel is likely to open a field hospital in Ukraine on Tuesday and that Israeli doctors and nurses will be flying on Monday from Israel to Ukraine in order to man that hospital in Ukraine. However, we still have to be mindful um, that Israel is very much mindful of Russia. Uh, Russian Ambassador Viktorov had requested to speak to MKs actually before President Zelensky does, and we're, we haven't heard any word on a response to that. Um, but Israel does need to bear in mind that it, uh, it needs Russia's support to counter Iranian activities in Syria, and it sees that as an existential threat. Thank you very much for bringing us all the latest, and you will, of course, be keeping us up to date with that upcoming uh, meeting. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.